get ready to raise the dead. On this edition, we're resurrecting Trick or Treat, actor-turned-director Charles Martin Smith's 1986 debut, which remains one of the best entries in metal exploitation. Metal exploitation combines cinematic horror with its musical equivalent, heavy metal. Like horror, heavy metal's aggressive music, occult imagery, and explicit lyrics became the target of politicians, religious leaders, and concerned parents during the 1980s satanic panic, in which rumors of satanic cults and subliminal messages had the status quo stocking up on holy water and crucifixes. Metal exploitation playfully confirmed those fears by depicting headbangers as occultists using music as a cover to convert souls. In Trick or Treat, that rocker is Sammy Kerr. Played by Tony Fields, Sammy is a veritable poster boy for the PMRC. There's also a cameo appearance by Ozzy Osbourne, the Prince of Darkness himself, and one-time frontman of Black Sabbath. Ozzy plays Reverend Aaron Gilstrom, a TV evangelist crusading against the associated evils of heavy metal. Sammy's the corrupting influence, but Eddie Weinbauer is the true metal disciple. Better known as Skippy Handelman of Family Ties fame, Mark Price plays Eddie, Sammy's adoring pen pal affectionately known as Ragman. Sammy hails from Eddie's hometown, and Eddie idolizes him because Sammy left Lake Ridge to become Rock's true warrior. The film opens with Eddie introduced as a nerdy metalhead via an opening montage in which Eddie is continually hazed. We're also introduced to Leslie Graham. Leslie seems sympathetic to Eddie's plight and becomes the object of his affection. Eddie's world, however, is about to get worse when it's reported that Sammy Kerr died in a hotel fire. Eddie visits local metal DJ Nuke, played by KISS co-founder Gene Simmons in a cameo performance. Nuke has a rare studio acetate of Sammy's final recording, which he presents to Eddie. Nuke already made a tape of it, which Nuke intends to broadcast at midnight on Halloween per Sammy's request. Upon playing the vinyl, Eddie discovers a backward message that seemingly tells him that he's the bait and to let the big fish hook themselves. He takes this message to heart and devises a setup for his jock tormentors, led by classic 80s bully Tim Haney. Upon further subliminal investigation, it's revealed that Sammy is, in fact, speaking directly to Eddie from beyond the grave. Sammy's paranormal bully shaming soon takes a dark turn when a metal shop encounter almost kills Tim. A peace offering mixtape intended for Tim ends up getting to second base with his girlfriend instead, and a newly confident Eddie begins committing various fashion crimes. Concerned, Eddie attempts to unplug Sammy, but a power surge allows him to escape the grooves and exist as electrical current that can travel to any radio receiver as long as the physical recording remains. Eddie destroys the acetate, but the dub tapes are still out there. Eddie enlists the help of his equally nerdy friend Roger to steal back Tim's tape. Roger doesn't believe Eddie and plays it. Sammy arrives and threatens Roger into playing the tape at the high school's Halloween dance. At the dance, Sammy smokes the house band's lead guitarist and leads the remaining band members in a rousing version of Fastway's Trick or Treat. At just over the hour mark, Sammy finally starts his killing spree by vaporizing members of the horrified crowd with high-voltage lightning strikes from his guitar. Eddie arrives on the scene, saves Leslie, and with help from Roger, kills the school's power. He destroys the dub tape, but Nuke's still scheduled to play his at midnight. So, Eddie and Leslie make a run for the radio station with Sammy in hot pursuit. Along the way, they learn that Sammy has one weakness, water. At the radio station, they discover that Sammy is using his powers to protect the recording. So, Eddie lures Sammy into a watery trap with poser and false metal taunts, which of course, work. With Sammy contained in a watery grave, Leslie is able to enter the studio and destroy the tape, thus ending Sammy's resurrection once and for all. Despite some less than stellar reviews, Trick or Treat has remained a cult favorite of metalheads who love the Fastway soundtrack. That soundtrack, however, might also be the reason for the film's current out-of-print status. Apparently, Anchor Bay planned to release a 20th Anniversary Edition DVD, but it stalled out due to the music licensing. As one of the more recognizable films to launch metal exploitation, Trick or Treat deserves a proper home video release, or at least streaming availability. However, in the meantime, hungry fans will have to pay exorbitant amounts for cheapskate and bootleg copies. Careful in seeking this film out, though. As Ozzy warns in the post credit scene, it, like heavy metal, could kick you off into becoming an absolute pervert.